Welcome to Time Travelers. I'm Jessica, and if this is your first time, welcome. Time Travelers is a place where you can hang out and learn that God can change inside of us so that we can change the world around us. This series that we're learning about is all about unity, and unity is working together to help each other no matter how different we could possibly be. Speaking of being different, hey Tom. Friends, this is my co-host Tom. Uh, what's with the get up? Did I miss a memo? Oh boy. You did, Jessica. We've got the inaugural Unbreakable Icebreaker Championship shattering expectations, not the ice, coming up. And I'm your coach. We've got to get you tournament ready. Oh goody. Because nothing says intense training like a game where you gently tap plastic block. That's right. We are going for the gold here, Jessica. No slacking off. Now let's start with some basic drills. Drills for this? Tom, it is a kid's game. How hard can this be? That's what they all say until they break the ice. Then the game's over. Now grab your mallet and let's begin with the tap and hold technique. Tap and hold? Yes, you tap and then you hold. Feel the balance, become one with the ice. How long do <laughs> yeah. I hold this? Well, until you feel one with the ice. Or until your arm goes numb, whichever comes first. Okay, Tom, I think you're taking this a little too seriously. It's just a game. Just a game? Jessica, this is a matter of precision, focus, and unbreakable concentration. You're really committed to this, huh? Absolutely. This is not what I had in mind when you said training. Look at this. All right, let's move on to visualization. Now, close your eyes. Just close them. Okay, picture the ice. See each block sturdy and strong. Now, imagine the perfect tap. Tap, tap, tap. Feel the connection between the mallet and the ice. Okay, I'm picturing it. Hey Tom, uh, isn't this a bit much? Oh. No distractions, Jessica. This is serious business. Okay. Next up, mental endurance. We're gonna simulate high pressure situations. Picture this, close your eyes. You're in the finals, the crowd is chanting your name. Jessica, Jessica. Now you have the last tap. What are you gonna do? Uh, tap it carefully and hold. Good, but what if the block wobbles? What if your hands start shaking? What if someone in the audience Sneezes. I'd probably say bless you and keep playing. No, no, no. You've got to stay focused. No room for distractions in the unbreakable icebreaker championship. Tom, I appreciate the effort, but I think you're overcomplicating things. This game is about having fun, not turning it into some psychological warfare. That's right. Psychology. On to the next drill. Block psychology Block 101. Psychology? Block psychology? Yep. You have to understand the mind of the ice blocks. Know which one is the weak link. Which one will shatter the entire foundation. It's all in the mind. Tom, these are plastic blocks and they don't have minds. Nope, that's exactly what they want you to think. I think you might be overthinking this. Now, shouldn't we just play the game? You know, I'm starting to think you don't appreciate the art of not breaking the ice, but fine, yeah, let's play around. Show me what you got. Okay, not bad, not bad, but you're still not tapping with enough purpose. You've got to tap like you mean it. There, purposeful enough for you? It's better, but you know what? We're still missing something. Tom, 
I'm just trying to keep the ice intact here. What more could you want? Hey guys. Hey Grace. What's up? I'm training for the inaugural Unbreakable Don't Break the Ice Championship. That's right, and I want us to be champions. Isn't that just a board game? Nonsense. I'm demonstrating unity. It is what we are learning about this month after all. Unity is working together and helping each other no matter how different we are. We are learning about unity, but when did Don't Break the Ice become a team sport? It's not. But I can do my part by helping Jessica in her training. Hmm. Seems like you might be focusing on the wrong things. And I think I've got just the story to help. Take it away! Hi, time travelers. Today I've got an epic story from the Bible. It's a story about recognizing who Jesus is, getting on board with God's plan, and let's just say there's a bit of a mix-up along the way. Let's check it out. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Gospel of Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. O Lord. Our story starts when Jesus asked his disciples a big question. He asked them, who do people say I am? Let's just say their responses were all over the map. Wait, did you hear that? Breaking news on uh, the news you can trust. You see it here first. Your window to the world. Live, a voice of truth. Nazareth News. Shalom, and welcome to Nazareth News, your source for the latest updates and heavenly headlines. I'm Tobias Tellwell, and tonight we will look closely at freezer burn. Is it frozen or burnt? But first, we have a story that's been causing a holy stir from Galilee to Jerusalem. Jesus of Nazareth, a local carpenter turned miracle worker, decided to quiz his disciples with a pop quiz that had everyone scratching their heads and checking their answer sheets twice. With us tonight, we have Simon, one of Jesus' closest friends and followers. Uh, my name is Peter. The Rock. I thought it was Simon. It was, but Jesus changed it to Peter. The Rock. Oh, okay then. News to me. Anyway, I, I'm joined by none other than um, Peter The Rock. Peter, thank you for taking the time to chat with us today. Let's start from the top. Jesus asked you all, who do people say I am? What was running through your mind at that moment? Well, some guys are thinking of Jesus could be John the Baptist, others Elijah, and a few of us just started rolling out random prophets like Ezekiel or Habakkuk or... It was kind of like playing biblical bingo. And then what happened? Well, Jesus then turned right to me and said, but who do you say that I am? What did you say? That yeah, was kind of my big moment. I looked at Jesus and I said, you are the Messiah. Nailed it, right? <laughs> That's pretty big deal. You recognized who Jesus really is? Yeah, and I was feeling really good about it. Then things kind of got a little complicated afterwards. Complicated? What do you mean? Well, right after I said that Jesus was a Messiah, he started talking about how he was going to suffer and be rejected and even die, and that didn't sound right. It still doesn't sound right. So. I kind of, you know, told him that that was a bad idea. You shouldn't do that. You told Jesus what he should and shouldn't do? Yeah, basically. <laughs> and not just my, well, not my best moment. I thought I was helping, but then Jesus gave me this look. And he said, and I quote, Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> Terrified. Uh, that was a bit of a wake-up call for me. Oh, yikes. That's pretty intense, Peter. Yeah, it was. And Jesus went on to explain that following him means denying ourselves, taking up our cross. It's not about our plans or what we think our plans should be, but God's plans. And I realized I was trying to put my plans ahead of his. Mm, that's a tough lesson to learn. But it sounds like it's all about getting on board with God's way of thinking, even when it's hard to understand. 
Exactly. We've got to recognize that God's plans are bigger and better than our plans, even when we don't get it at first. So there you have it. A big day of surprises, tough lessons, and bold challenges to follow Jesus. If you ever wondered what it takes to be a follower of Jesus, now you know. A lot of faith, a bit of courage, and maybe a thick skin for some tough lessons. And remember folks, if you ever feel down, just think of Peter. One minute, he's on top of the world, and the next, he's not. Keep the faith and keep it turned to Nazareth News. Back to you. Whoa, that is breaking news. Our story today teaches us that we not only need to recognize who Jesus is, but in order to follow him, we also need to get on board with God's plan, even when it's tough. It's about thinking like God and working together for his greater purpose. And sometimes that means denying ourselves and putting his agenda first. Remember, God wants to collaborate and partner with us, but we've got to be willing to follow his lead. So, next time you're tempted to do things your own way, take a step back and ask, what would God want me to do? And then trust him to guide you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa, that was unbelievable. It sure was. I loved that when Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter had the courage to speak up and say what he knew was true. He recognized that Jesus as the Messiah. Yeah, but then Peter totally messes up by telling Jesus not to go to the cross. He was working against Jesus instead of working together to help Jesus. I bet that made Jesus really mad. Not exactly. Jesus used this moment to teach Peter and us something really important. Following Jesus sometimes means giving up our own plans to align with God's purpose. So you're saying that, like Peter, we need to recognize when we're focusing on the wrong thing? Exactly. Oh, so maybe I was caught up in my own agenda of winning the tournament that I forgot what really matters. I think so. You see, God wants to collaborate with us, but that means putting his agenda first. It's not about my strategy or your strategy. It's about working together for a greater purpose. So we need to think like God thinks, recognize our abilities come from him and work together for something bigger than a game. Right. And sometimes that means denying ourselves, maybe even giving up on our right to be right. We're being misunderstood because we're putting God's plan first. You're right. Maybe my super intense training wasn't the best idea. Maybe we should focus on enjoying the game and plan for the right reasons. Now you're thinking like a champion, Tom. Thank you for the story, Grace. You gave us a lot to think about. My pleasure. See you soon. Bye. Bye. All right, let's give this don't break the ice challenge another go. But this time, let's just have fun and see what happens. Okay, I'm with you. Let's do this. All right, ready? Yes, all right, your turn. All right. Okay, okay, nice. okay, okay. Mm, thought about that one. I did, that was mm. finished. Mm. Oh, got lucky. Aha! Oh, I'm now nervous. Oh, I like to win. <gasps> That's not good. Do I have to hit it still? I think, oh, wow, you took out three different ones. Look, it's still standing. Yep, and no intense drills needed. <laughs> Who knew that having fun could actually help us play a little better? You know, it's almost like someone told us to put God's plan first and everything else would fall into place. Imagine that. Shall we thank God for his amazing plan? Absolutely. Will you all bow your heads and pray with me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, thank you for giving us abilities and talents that we can use to work together for your good purposes. Help us to think like you and put your plans first, even when it's hard. Just like Peter, we sometimes get things right and other times we make mistakes, but we know you are always with us. Teach us to deny ourselves and follow you, even when others don't understand. Help us to stay humble, give up our need to always be right, and trust in your plan. Thank you for always wanting to work with us and guide us. Amen. In the name Amen. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for praying. Of course. Our time is almost up for today, and 
we need to get to the inaugural Unbreakable Icebreaker Championship shattering expectations, not the ice. But remember friends, it's not all about winning the game. It's about working together and putting God's plan first. And maybe a little bit of not breaking the ice. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. We hope to see you next time in... Time, time Travelers! Travelers. Bye!